The name of this video is Ira Krakow's Blender 2.5 Animation Tutorial Part 2. In my first animation video, I showed how to keyframe location, rotation, scale, and material color, as well as how to group keyframe properties into keying sets. I left you probably wondering how, considering that the IPO window has disappeared, you can change the curves by editing them as you could in version 2.4x. In this video, I will show how this is done, and how overall the animation process is easier than before. We will also look at some properties that now can be keyframed, such as modifiers, as well as the new F-curve system. So let's start with the default scene with the default cube. Change to the animation view. In the animation view, there are a number of new windows in addition to the 3D window. The three that specifically relate to animation are on the left part of the screen. At the top is the dope sheet, which is the new name for the action editor. As before, pressing control down arrow makes the window full screen. We'll be doing this a lot in this video to see what's going on in a particular window. Pressing control down arrow again returns the window to its original size. In the middle left part is the graph editor, which is the new version of 2.4x's IPO editor. You can edit animation curves in the graph editor. The organization of the curves has been redone with major enhancements which I'll point out as we go. At the bottom right corner is the timeline, the window which has changed the least. As before, you can scrub the animation by dragging the vertical green arrow and the VCR like keys do roughly what they did before. As I mentioned in the 2.50 animation part 1 tutorial, you can now run the animation backwards. Before we start, set the end frame of the animation to 50 frames by entering 50 in the end area of the timeline. We're going to insert a lock rot scale keyframe at frame 1 to start the animation process. It works the same way. Position the cursor over the 3D window, press the I key, select lock rot scale, and let's see what happens. It looks like there were some curves added in the graph editor. Press control down arrow to see what was added. We can't see what curves were added until we click on the left arrow to expand the display. Nine curves indeed were added, location, rotation, and scale in the X, Y, and Z direction, as in 2.4X. The rotation curve has a new term, Euler, which wasn't there before. That's because rotation can be done in what's called quaternions as well as Eulers. For the time being, ignore this. Eulers are what we're familiar with. We know them as X, Y, and Z and we'll go into more detail about these curves after we actually animate the cube. Press control down arrow to return the graph editor back to its original size. Go to frame 25. Press the G key and drag to move the cube over four or five blender units. Press enter when done. Scale the cube up two times, S2, enter. Rotate the cube 45 degrees, R45, enter. Press the I key and insert a lock rot scale keyframe. Let's see what happened in the various graphs. Start with the graph editor. Indeed, there are nine curves now that we can see. They're all visible because all the checkboxes on the left are checked. There's also an individual color assigned to each curve, such as red for the cube's X location. Let's in fact edit the curve for the cube's X location. To do that, uncheck all the boxes except for the X location curve. As before, each curve, they're now called F-curves, is a Bezier curve. You're in edit mode with all the points, each representing a keyframe, selected. Press A to deselect all, then right-click on the ending keyframe. Move it up two blender units or so by pressing the G key and moving it up. If you uncheck the cube group and check it all again, all the curves display. The lock icon controls whether or not a particular curve can be edited. If you click on it, the lock icon goes into a lock position and it can't be edited. If you click on it again, the curve is unlocked and can be edited. Press Control down arrow to return the graph editor to its original location. Press Alt A to run the animation. The cube goes in the X direction according to how you edited it. The I icon controls whether or not that particular curve contributes to the animation. It's a toggle. When the curve contributes to the animation, you see an eye. When it doesn't, the icon is grayed out. To show you how it works, click on all the eyes except the one associated with the X location curve. 
Press Control down arrow to return the graph editor back to its original location. Press Alt A or use the VCR keys to animate. Now the cube just moves in the X direction. The other curves don't do anything. While we're animating, note that the dope sheet, the graph at the top part of the right of the screen, was populated. Position the cursor over the dope sheet and press Control down arrow. These are actions that can be combined in the NLA editor. We won't discuss these in this video. I just wanted to point this out. There still seem to be some problems with screen refreshing of this window. Let's see what happens when we animate another object. Let's add Suzanne to the scene. Shift A, Add Mesh Monkey. Let's insert a lock rot scale keyframe for her. Press the I key, then select lock rot scale. Some more curves were added. Amazingly, we can edit the curves of both objects. What happened? First, Suzanne is now called Mesh. There's an object called Mesh, as well as a Mesh called Mesh. As with the cube, the curves for what we used to know as Suzanne are in the Mesh's Mesh. If you expand the Mesh's Mesh, you'll see them. You can also view the cube's curves at the same time. Press Alt down arrow to return the graph editor back to its original position. The last thing I'll show in this video is that modifiers can be keyframed. This can make for amazing effects. Let's add an array modifier to the monkey. Set the current frame to 1, then click on the modifier icon in the Mesh's properties. Select Array. Change the count to 4. With the cursor on count in the array modifier area, right click. Select Insert Keyframe. Then go to frame 25. Change the count to 2. With the cursor on count, select Insert Keyframe. Press Alt A to run the animation. Note how the number of monkeys changed. Look at the graph editor. A new curve called count parenthesis array was created. There's also a count parenthesis array curve created in the dope sheet. The goal is that any property you can see can be animated. Think of all the modifiers and all their properties that you can animate easily. Believe it or not, this only scratches the surface. I hope this tutorial gets you to think about how Blender's 2.5 animation can work in your scenes. Another thing is that constraints can be modified. Don't forget to subscribe to my videos on YouTube so you won't miss any more of my videos. Happy blendering!